Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode 51 for you all. And it's a different type of episode. We might have done one of these a while ago. I can't remember, but the title of this one is just going to be Barbershop Talk, Barbershop Episode, something along those lines. Because y'all know if y'all go in to get your hair cut, you liable to hear basketball talk about anything. Dudes is talking about any era. Literally no topic is off the board. And that's really what I want to do today. I don't want to have no strict agenda. Um, we're coming up about a month or so from the postseason. Um, we're going to have a lot of content, obviously, coming out, especially playing and postseason, doing a lot of our in-series breakdown, which is where we started last year. So if, you, if you've been around since then, you're a real one because we're coming mm-hmm. up on a year of, of, of the pod at this point. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just, just keep it loose and just, just, just hoops talk today. Just hoops talk, no real agenda. Only thing I got planned is we're going to do a little bit of a, a March Madness draft at the end because tournament did start is upsets going all over the place. Guy from Oakland, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher his last name. I think it was Gelke. 10 threes last night to beat Kentucky. Three dribbles the whole game. Three dribbles, 10 threes. Bro, got the strat. <laughs> Burner, bro. He's taken eight two point shots the whole season. <laughs> For real? That's great. Shot, bro. The shot chart, and every single one of them was a layup. Like all of them are in the paint. <laughs> Everything I mean, else, he has like 170 shots, all threes. I'm going to say, I'm here for one reason and one reason only. That is to shoot the ball. I respect it. He, he came out, lit up Kentucky, um, and then went to the podium and was like, bro, all them dudes on that court are going to go to the NBA. I'm I'm probably not, but on any given night, I, I got it on me. Ah, I respect I like that. it. <laughs> I respect fire. it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of draft, definitely around the, the tournament, March Madness. Um, other than that, like I said, no agenda. Housekeeping, as always. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications. Um, go over to the audio platforms. Be sure to leave us a five star rating. I just saw we hit over a thousand plays now between Spotify mm. and Apple on the podcast on the, the audio platform. So we appreciate the support. Y'all definitely been going crazy, especially on socials. Which, if you aren't followed at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok, tune in. We're keeping the shorts content coming in at a pretty good cadence these days. Um, and yeah. I said, only other thing I really had was just I'm gonna go through the top stories and wherever the convo leads us is where it leads us. So I got I literally have ESPN pulled up. I got the top headlines here, and we're gonna start there. First thing I see when I just click on the NBA homepage is Anthony Edwards dunking on John Collins, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Body bag, bro. What at genuinely? Anthony Edwards' highlight reel at the age of 22 is already better than a lot of people's career mixtapes. 100%. Like, <laughs> bro has some of the craziest dunks you've ever seen in, in NBA history already. It's it's crazy how, like you said, he's only 22. But, <laughs> bro, he's put people in absolute body bags. Because, like, there's posters where guys are like, they kind of jump. They're there. Maybe it's even body to body. You know what I'm saying? But they still there right. on their feet. He is like, bro. He gave John Collins a concussion, bro. Right. <laughs> he gave him a concussion and dislocated his own finger. If that's not a body bag, I don't know what is. Like, if bro had to leave the game, that's a literal body bag, right? And for that to be, like, you still could argue, and y'all, if y'all are listening. Uh, he had a dunk. This might have been during the COVID season. It was I, mean, I vividly remember because it was no fans. Baseline. He had like the, the tarps up. Yes, on mm-hmm. Yuta Watanabe, bro. Yes, bro. That's, that one yo. still might be better. But the fact that he has just off the top of my head two dunks like that, he's 22, bro. He's not even literally physically, biologically at his <laughs> athletic peak yet, bro. <laughs> bro he gets he's doing so this high. stuff on a nightly basis, bro. He he gets so high on his dunks. It's like 
but he like yeah, he literally hurts himself once it's done because he gets so high. Like the one on 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 uh, on the baseline, he remember didn't he like fall? He ended up like falling and like folding himself. Yeah, he folded like, over on his knees. Yeah, but he like put, he also put Yuta on the ground from how explosive he took off. Like you you think he's you think that one was better? I feel like that one, like the John Collins one, was more. It was like puncher was more explosive. The Yuta one was like, nah, we're beating in the air, body to body, and then it's mm-hmm. like, I'm just, I'm just stronger. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna finish, bro. <laughs> you need to stop. You need to stop jumping with Ant, bro. He got. He got to stop jumping with Ant now. But we, we seen the, the way the the way the league is now, bro. With these guys, they're so athletic. Like him. Ja Morant, a lot of these guys are so athletic, bro. These dunks, almost like, I'm not saying, like, because they definitely don't get watered down because people are still talking about the, the Anthony Edwards dunk. So, like, they give it their credit for sure. But when you look at it, bro, that's that's not normal to, to put guys on posters like this. Like, that, that, like, his dunk was legitimately up there with one of the best dunks, you, one of the best posterizers you've ever seen in NBA history. Like, when you think about all, like, the Blake Griffin, like, all these guys who had crazy posters, like that's up there for sure. And he, like you said, he has two of them already, which is nuts. <laughs> I'm sure he has two. more. That's just the first one that always comes to mind mm-hmm. um, because it was so violent. Like it is a violent dunk. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the people that are trying to be nitpicky and be like, uh, it wasn't a dunk. He didn't really touch the rim. Right. That was an ex- a, a contact layup. <laughs> if that's a, that's a contact layup, bro. That's a pretty aggressive contact <laughs> layup. What are we talking about? I I don't like that. That uh, I don't like that because people don't really. Well, I guess people did kind of say, it. you know, Blake's dunk. I think it was on Kendrick Perkins. No, no, people said that for years. Even at the time, I remember people saying that he he threw the ball in. I don't care, bro. bro he was all... he literally would have gone to the rim if his body didn't get in the way, <laughs> like. Bro, personally, I don't care if you can get high enough to throw the ball that aggressive into the rim. I'm still impressed. Whether you want to call it a dunk or not, I'm impressed because you got that high to where you threw the ball into the rim that aggressively. Like you just you just said something there and didn't even peep it. It's a lay up. I'm putting the ball up to the rim. You're above the rim throwing it down, bro. I don't care whether right. you're hitting the rim or not. <laughs> you're dunking the ball and you're throwing it down versus. Yeah, you can you can finish with some contact, but you're staying under the rim. Mm-hmm. No, Anthony Edwards, his head is at the rim, bro. He's Facts. throwing the ball eye level down. And it's even bro- if you feel like it's not a dunk, bro, that, I, that doesn't take away from the play, bro. It's still ridiculous athleticism and strength. If you think it's like if he, okay, he didn't touch the rim, who cares? Just enjoy the highlight. Right. Like, why are we even nitpicking right. a dunk? Like, who cares, bro? This, only people who should be like, that's not a dunk is John Collins. Fan. John Collins. <laughs> <laughs> be like, look, this that's not even a crazy dunk. That's gonna be the only people who's on that side. Other than that, bro, you should just enjoy the fact that he just put a crazy highlight up there. But it's also crazy the fact that, and we're just coming off of I, I don't remember how long ago it was between the dunk um and the block, but it's like. To have two crazy highlights like that back to back and hurt yourself on both plays because you got so high is nuts. Because I remember right. people was having a debate like which one was better, the dunk or the block. People were saying like obviously the circumstance with the block, you know, kind of a game saving block, but the right. dunk is just like bro, he got it's body, dunk, bro. Like, I don't right. know. The dunk was crazy. So that um, dunk immediately inserted itself into any. You go on YouTube and type in best dunks NBA history. That one is gonna be on every mixtape from here on out. It should be, and it definitely should be. All right. Speaking of them, like, they – we talked about it last time. Coming off of the news that Cat was going to be out for what seems like pretty much the rest of the, the regular season, they kind of were at a point where, you know, they could have started to skid out. But Anthony Edwards is keeping them afloat. Like, since Cat is out, I think – I think he's they're five and three, which isn't like you know the best record, obviously, but like they've got wins over the Clippers, who have been you know a little wobbly as of late. Two wins against the Jazz, the game against the Pacers, where again he had the the game saving block, and then they had a three point loss to the Nuggets the other night. I think they're playing the Cavs right now, but like there was some real thought that they could potentially really slide 
out to potentially down um, to the four seed. But that win against the Clippers is big for them. I don't think I see a world where they slide any lower than three. And they're still only a game and a half back of the one seed, um, which very, very sneakily Denver is now tied for the one seed. Jokic is getting his bag. Mm -hmm. Um, But just the fact that he's really – I think he's averaging over 30 a night since Cat has been out. Like just his ability to shoulder the load on that side of the ball. Like it it can't be overstated how made for this type of moment Anthony Edwards is at such a young age that they are – Minnesota is going to have a very, very bright future for a long time as long as they're able to to keep him happy and keep him there because you don't see guys very often who are able to have the combination of athleticism, defensive tools, and defensive effort, both of them. And then, he, bro, he's just like – he's got that dog in him. Like, he's just got the killer instinct. He's got that type of mentality. That's why he's – I guarantee you he's going to become your old head's favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> he giving them Jordan flashbacks, bro. He's going to be real. every old head's favorite player. That's Jordan's um, son right there. Right. And, but rightfully so. He he's He's doing things to make that comparison in some ways viable. Um, so shout out to him because he, he's got this team, again, still in the thick of it, in contention for the one seed out west at a time where they really could have could have kind of skidded out to end this this little stretch in the regular season without their number two option. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when we talked about it before, like, because I think the question was, do we think that they'll remain in that top three seed? And I said yes, strictly off the fact that I got faith in Ant. Like, we both had faith in Ant since the beginning when we were talking about our breakout players. Um and you know, like like I said, we we all we seen this from Ant before. We seen like flashes of not even flashes. Like he is a number one guy. Like he's just so young. Um, it's normally you normally don't see that this early, but he is that type of guy where he can kind of carry an offensive load. He can kind of lead a team on his own. And with Cat out, he kind of had to take more of the offensive load. And like I said, a lot of these games, they you know have been able to stay in the game. They've been able to have guys step up. Um, and then come like squeak away with some of these wins, which is huge. Like I said, as far as like being able to keep the top three seed, especially that win against the Clippers, I believe I'm pretty sure they was like down a lot in that game. I think they just went on a couple. I just they just mm-hmm. got some stops, hit some shots, went on a little bit of run, and end up coming back and winning that game. Um, but yeah, that, that's what they're capable of because they're already gonna, they're still gonna be a good defensive team. You're just gonna have Ant do his thing. You need guys that's gonna be able to step up when you need to step up. So like I said, this Timberwolves team is definitely. It's definitely scary, um, and like I said, the fact that Ant is so young, doing this so early, it's like the future is so bright. Because right now, I mean, guys don't hit their their quote unquote prime until about like 27, 28. Right. Like that's when guys are really, I I'd say at their athletic peak, at their you know their game kind of peaks at that point. You know that's when guys are really expected to you know lead team lead teams to championships if you're on that level. So the mm-hmm. fact he's already able to step into that role, you know, uh, lead a team, you know, be that guy, show flashes of someone who can really take over games, take over like series at certain moments, like it's it's scary. Now it's, it's definitely scary, and it's it makes these playoffs way more interesting because, I mean, you think the biggest excuse for some of these teams in the West is like youth, like we're talking mm-hmm. about like, teams like the Thunder, teams like the Timberwolves, it's like. Yeah, they're great in the regular season, but if they match up, there'd be people who would pick some of these lower seeds off of just experience because these teams are so young. So right. it's going to be interesting. It's going to make the playoffs even uh, more interesting just because, say, teams like the Thunder or the Timberwolves make it far, then it's like that experience, you know what I mean? They kind of overcame that hurdle. So it makes the playoffs a lot more interesting. It's, it's going to be uh, – we talked about it before. I think every matchup, is going to be exciting. Like there's going to be no, there's no layups in the whole, the whole West, bro. The, the 10th seed is a scary 10th seed. Like, right. It's wild. I I like that you brought up the youth because it's something that I thought about and it was coming out of listening to LeBron's pod with JJ, where he talked about, and I think we talked about it in maybe one of the most recent episodes, how people really have dog Tatum as of late obviously going back to the fact that it's like, well, he's gone to the Eastern conference finals so many times he made it to the finals, but they, he just, he hasn't won it yet. 
Mm -hmm. I feel like he catches so much slack for that. And LeBron was like, dude's got to remember, like, I didn't, he's like, I didn't win my first one until I was 28. Mm -hmm. Talking about Giannis and Jordan didn't win until they were 27. Jokic was 27 or 28. Right. Um, I think that narrative, when we look back, let's say five, 10 years from now, that's going to shift, bro. We're going to start having guys who are coming in at 18 or 19. They're going to take those first two, three years to really develop. And we're seeing guys hit these really high peaks earlier and earlier. Luca, obviously, and like right now, they're anomalies in a sense. Like Luca coming in as ready as he was. Obviously, he'd been playing professional basketball for so long, playing for Real Madrid in Spain. Um, or even like a guy like Wemby, obviously, we're talking about Anthony Edwards. Shea has kind of been ascending on this path. Um, for a while now, I think we're going to continue to see guys come in and then like by like 22, 23, it's like, they're going to be ready to start. If the team around them is constructed well enough, they're going to be ready to start contending. And we're going to soon see a team get in like potentially could be this year. Like there's no, the, the team like the Timberwolves or the Thunder have, they check all the boxes of what you would typically like to see for most aspects in a championship team. Um, the Thunder, I would say probably even more so than the Timberwolves because they've got, you know, solidified defense and a solidified offense. And then mm-hmm. they've got all the other pieces around them. They've got ridiculous shooting. Like I can go on and on about that team, but um, like, I think very soon we'll see a team like led by a young guy, 23, 24 year old, just like go out and do it. And like, you see that a couple more times. Like you might, that experience is going to start to mean a little bit less because guys are just going to come in so early. And it's like, honestly, like we might not even be saying the same thing if Tatum had gotten it done when they were, you know, against Golden State. Cause like, yeah, even LeBron said, like the Celtics were the more talented team, but then that boils back down to the experience. But it's like, you're going to, there's going to be somebody that's going to come in. They're going to go on like one or two playoff runs super early in their career. And they're going to be like 23, 24. And they're just, it's going to click, and they're going to get it done. And yeah. gonna, that age is going to start going younger and younger, you know what I mean? But obviously, it's still going to be for a very select few. But I think we're reaching a point where the, the talent is just peaking in ways that it's never never has before in the NBA. Um, and I really think we're going to see young guys being able to, to ascend to that level sooner because they're able to come in earlier and just, like, get up to speed faster. I think it's going to be interesting to see if that was going to be, like you said, right now, a lot of these guys are like anomalies. It's going to be interesting to see if that becomes the flat out norm or versus we're just going to have people who do it. You know what I mean? Because like right. even let's say like a team like let's just say let's just throw out there the Thunder win the championship. Right. That doesn't mean for every young team that comes in the league now, it's just like, no, the Thunder did it so they can do it. And that could right. still just be the anomaly. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see if that's like what's going to be the norm. Because when you look at like a lot of these young guys that even get far, let's even let's talk about like a Tatum. It, it's it's really tough to complete it. Like it's tough to win the whole thing. Like we've seen Tatum get over the struggle of like you know like Game Seven in the like Eastern Conference Finals, like win that. But then when we get to the finals, it's like you see him like if we're just being honest, kind of crumble, going mm-hmm. up against what a team that's not as talented. Like I feel like everybody, unless you're a Warriors fan, think that the Warriors weren't as talented as the Celtics. But right. you got Steph Curry, who's been there multiple times. You got Draymond, who's been there multiple times. You have a coach who's been there multiple times. Like, you just have a more experienced team that's been there and know what it takes mm-hmm. as far as adjustments, as far as strategy, as far as even as something as simple as, like, stamina. You know what I mean? Being used right, to playing yeah. all the, all those games, all these you series. And you 100-plus games when you get to the finals. Like, you are exactly. you're probably deep. A guy, so let's say a guy who's never been that far. You might think you, you might think you're in great shape, but when you get there, you've played games. You, you played many games that you don't think you've ever played in your life. Now it's like, oh, you're kind of burnt out because you're not used to making it this far. Right. So I think that it'd be like I said, it'd be interesting to see if that becomes a norm. But it's gonna like some whoever does it though, like that young guy that comes in and then wins it. It's gonna be a special player, like a really special player, because the person that you're probably going to face in the finals whoever it may be is probably going to be a guy who's been there before a guy who's done it before another one of the top players in the league probably way older than you so like i said it's just going to take a very very special player but it's definitely not 
not out of the, the realm of possibility for sure. Especially because, like you said, a lot of guys are coming into the league a lot more. I mean, a lot younger, I mean. And then they're coming to the, into the league so skilled already, so mm-hmm. kind of refined already. So it's going to be interesting to see if that happens relatively soon. Definitely. And, like, while we're talking about the Thunder, I was listening to Tim Legler and J.J. Redick talk about what makes this team so special this year. And they said something that I didn't realize. I literally had to go back and fact check it. Do you know? So in in their standard typical rotation, Josh Giddy is the biggest non-shooter. He's shooting mm-hmm. 33, 32% from three. Do you know what the rest of their rotation, like they're full, everybody, anybody that's viable for them to play in the playoffs, do you know what they're shooting from three, bro? I know it's something insane because I see a st- I saw the stat in the beginning of the year. I didn't know how if it if it kept up through most of the year because a lot of people were saying that it wasn't gonna like that's probably gonna be an anomaly. I think it was like mad people were shooting like crazy percentages from three, bro. Jalen Williams, the center, he's shooting thirty six percent from three. Shea is shooting thirty seven from three. He only takes three a game. We know he lives in that mm-hmm. ten to twelve foot range. Chet is shooting 39%. Kenrich Williams, 39%. Isaiah Joe, 40.8. Lou Dort, 41. Kaysen Wallace, 41. Uh, J-Dub, 44. Aaron <laughs> Wiggins, 49. Gordon Hayward's been there for a couple games. He's shooting 58% from three. <laughs> Their whole rotation is almost exclusively 37% and up from three. And that 37% is literally their center. Their backup center, Jada, uh, the other Jalen Williams. Like, I mean, that is absurd. And you can't ask for a better lineup around a guard like Shea. I was about to say the fact that them driving kicks hit because them those shots are uh, so much more open. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You still obviously take the good shooters and still knock them shots down at that consistent of a clip for this length of time, too. It'd be different. Like I said, I've seen some similar stats to those, but it was more so in the beginning of the year. So they still had plenty of room for that to like regress to the norm a little bit. But the fact that they've played about damn near the whole season at this point and is shooting this good from three, it says a lot about the way the team is constructed. A hundred percent. They are, they are letting it fly. Um, I want to flip. We, we spent, spent a little bit here talking about some of the top teams in the, the East and the West. Let's really get to the playing. Um, and really the Western Conference play in the Eastern Conference. Honestly, and I, I actually, this, this brings up a good point. Do you think they should bring back the rule like they had in the bubble where the play-in only kicks in if you're within a certain number of games? Because in the East, it feels kind of crazy that the freaking, the the Hawks are going to be in the play-in. And they are a whole eight games back from, from the Heat, who are the seven seed. Or actually, they're eight games back from the Sixers, who are the eight seed. Like, they should not even have a chance to make the playoffs. They should just be eliminated off the fact that the gap is that big. Yeah, I always would. I'm be honest. Like, when they said that they were bringing the play-in back after the bubble, I was kind of against it because I was on the side of, like, bro, we have 82 games, and y'all need two more? <laughs> like, bro, right. like, come on, bro. But I've softened on softened that blow mainly because the games have been so good. Elite, like there's elite been hoops. A, elite hoops. Like it's like one game elimination, like March Madness. It's it's been good. It's been great games. But in a situation like you said with the Hawks, it's like, come on, bro. What are we What are we doing here? Why Why are you Why you shouldn't even have a chance to compete for it? So yeah, I think that a happy median would be it, it needs to. You need to be within a certain amount of games of the teams above you to qualify for the plan. You being eight games back, it's like, no. <laughs> like, you go home, bro. You shouldn't do that. But <laughs> right, like, right. So yeah, I, I, I softened that blow a little bit, but I think that would be a, a good little balance to still have, you know, the high – because that, that would still make the games, um like, high-quality games. Because, like like I said, in the West right now, like, these they're, like, half games back. I think the Warriors are, what, a half game back of the Lakers. Like, right. it's it would still make sense to do it here. But – yeah, I, I don't really know, man. It, and I think that that might change when we have a full plan of just a bunch of like a bunch of teams that shouldn't be in it. Because right now, I feel like every playing year, you've at least had a few games of teams that 
I'm not saying they should have been in the plan, but are way better than what their record showed. Like, yeah. The 10th seed is the Warriors, which they haven't been playing great, but it's a Steph Curry team. Like, there's, I mean, the Warriors win one game. Now the 10th seed is the Lakers with LeBron and AD. It's like, we're kind of getting spoiled with elite playing teams where normally 9-10 yeah. seed is not like, LeBron, a, a LeBron Steph matchup. Like Bro, the nine ten seed in the East is the Bulls and the Hawks. Exactly. Like, teams that need to make major shakeups to be relevant again right now. Like exactly. The West is just it, it's it's a crazy dog fight. And, and I want to go there because for two reasons. One, there's it it's shaping up right now that the Pelicans are are moving. They they did lose a game. I think it was last night to the Magic, who, credit to them, Paolo played fantastic. I think it was the second triple-double um, of his career. He was able to – he's one of the few players in the league that I think can really use both his his length but also his size to body up Zion. Between him, they had Jonathan Isaac on him for spurts as well. They were able to kind of give him as much trouble as you can give Zion these days. Um it's like the Pelicans have kind of separated themselves from the pack. They've got a, almost a two-game cushion ahead of the sixth seed, which is Dallas. Dallas and Phoenix are tied for the same record, but they have the tiebreaker, so they're the sixth seed. So it's really five games or five teams, the Mavericks, the Suns, the Kings, the Lakers, and the Warriors, who are comfortably – like four of those five are going to be in the plan for certain. Very quietly, though, Houston Rockets are only two and a half games back of Golden State. Just low key. Just, just, just ever so slightly also on a seven-game win streak. With Jalen Green out here looking like Let's talk the about GOAT. It. Like, bro's having a kid on the way and started hooping. Did you see him drop the man? Look at the man. Look back up. Shoot the three and turn around and run away. Oh, all that one clip, and it was like it was a legit like turn and run away. It was like as soon as he let it go, he was gone. He's I'm back like, on defense. I'm like, yo, this is who is this? Who is this, bro? New player, bro. Nah, New, he's, he, he's, the he's last like two weeks, this is a totally different Jalen Green. Did you see him do the Michael Jordan? I'm about to dunk it, switch reverse layup. I didn't even feel like that got social media coverage. Because That's that is like one of the most iconic Jordan clips ever, ever. Jalen Green just pulled that out casually on a, a Wednesday night. Side that note, should tell you where the talent in the league is at right that, now. That's what I was going to say. Side note: That's why comparing eras is so hard, bro. Because right. that a lot, and this is not even no disrespect to Jordan. This is literally just like. Science, like a lot of the stuff that he did, like doing it now is like okay, cool. But for the time, it was amazing. It was great. But like that's why comparing eras is dumb. Because if if Jordan grew up in this era, he'd probably be doing even crazier stuff. You never know. Right. Medicine and stuff. And that's just a right. little side note. I'm not to go on. A, I can go on a whole tangent about that. But you know, he's he's <laughs> Taylor Green's moving different. He did it twice though. He did the turnaround three twice. I the second one was crazy. I feel like he shot, he literally felt like the ball left his hand and gone. Yeah, he's like, moving different, bro. That's what having a kid on the way do to you, bro. You have you out here hooping. And have you listen, you gotta get to the bag, bro. He's, <laughs> you gotta get to the bag. There's no more playing around, there's no more playing games. Right. Um, so yeah, like the the Rockets are. Like, forget talking about they're mathematically still in. There is a, like, bro, two and a half games. That's basically the Warriors lose one, the Rockets win one. It's half a game, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, they are right there within striking distance um, of potentially jumping into a play in that just a couple weeks ago it felt like it was pretty – like, we felt like it was those over. ten teams, it was locked up. Mm -hmm. And this seven-game win streak for the – the Rockets and the Warriors have been on a little bit of a slid. They're five and five in their last ten. Has us in this spot right now. But um, what I what I really want to get at for this this playing tournament, and honestly, I, yeah, let's talk about the Suns, bro. <laughs> I'm, I uh, as if you've been listening for a while, no. 
neither of us are big on super team construction. We don't think that's really conducive to championships this in this day and age in the NBA. So neither of us were particularly high on the big three of Booker, Beal, and KD. Like, again, offensively, you're putting together an absurd amount of talent, but it's always, well, what do you have around you that is going to elevate you? Because unless you three are going ballistic, you're going to need a little bit of support. And then obviously defensively, you're going to need a lot of support. And honestly, neither one of those things really happened. That their big three, first of all, doesn't just go out here and just like they're not just out here combining for 90. Like they're not out here just blowing the brakes off of people, unstoppable scoring. KD is, mm-hmm. book will, but it's it all three of them at the same time. It's it's not, it doesn't feel as overwhelming. Not overwhelming. Yeah. Right. It doesn't feel the same way when you put KD on the Warriors. It doesn't it's obviously the talent is not the same, but like or even feeling, like Katie Harden and Kyrie was. It was like even when they because they were all closer to their prime. So like right. even when, when they played, it was like, oh no, nah, they could legitimately just go crazy and win. But you know what the difference was there? They had better players around them. There's a young mm-hmm. Bruce Brown on that roster. There's a young Nick Claxton on that roster. Like there are guys there, Joe Harris. Like there are people who are very quality role players around them in that system. The Suns are lacking a lot of that. And what's crazy is Grayson Allen is having a great year. And it feels like it feels like it just doesn't matter, bro. I'm I'm never going to be the guy to just be like, I'm going to take one game and just rip you apart for it. Cause it's like, it's a regular season. It's an 82 game season. Like you can just come out and have a bad night, whatever. But bro, Saturday, it was, this was last Saturday. They played the Bucks. Um, granted, it, it was uh on was the no road Giannis, in Milwaukee, right. right? Giannis, this is like right before the game is announced that he's not out. The same time Chris Middleton is coming back. So you got Chris Middleton coming off of an injury. No Giannis. Your your whole big three is here, fully healthy. In a position right now where we're just late in the season and you are in the thick of the plan, like with still a chance to find your way out of the plan, no team should want to be in a position to to lose one or two games and be out of the playoffs, especially when they're, I think right now sitting in the seventh seed, like you would obviously much rather get up to six and not have to worry about that. So every game here is, it's not must win, but you have to kind of approach it that way because you want to get out of a win or go home scenario, like what you just said, where the Western Conference plan is so loaded with talent that you don't want to you don't want to put yourself in that situation where you could have an off game and lose and then now your season's over. Mm-hmm. So this is a game you need to just you know Giannis we, that has to be a win. Facts. And they let Bobby Portis of all people take over. Like the defense was atrocious. Never again in my life do I want to hear people say that because you have a bad defensive team, you can just sign a good defensive coach and he can just make he can just make bad personnel great. Because it's not possible, bro. Mm-mm. I'm not I don't, I don't care what Frank Vogel wanted to do schematically on that Saturday game against the Bucks. It wouldn't have mattered, bro. No effort. Like literally zero effort was being played. There's no reason that the Suns should have lost this game in the fashion that they did. Kevin Durant, I don't think, even shot the ball in the fourth quarter. He had 11 points in this game. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they, at at the time, like his last, I think it was like three or four fourth quarters, he had like four points. Yeah, he had like not even shooting for real in the fourth quarter. So I'm I'm so good off the Suns. Like, I already was not a believer, but it's like, it's just it, it it all boils down to the fact that you're so heavily reliant on let's be real, Kevin Durant and Booker. Like like Bill's a great addition, but like those two are having great seasons. Kevin Durant still on a nightly basis can is playing some of the best basketball we've ever seen from him. And it's just it's just not enough, bro. It's not enough when your defense is this bad. 
when you're letting guys like Bobby Portis come off of the bench and give you 31. There, there were so many threes in that game for Milwaukee that were wide. I'm talking wide open. And one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm watching basketball is at any level is when guys literally turn and see that, that that's their rotation and it's an open shot and they just watch. Like, don't – no 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 effort. Like, at that point, I get it. You might say, like, you're not really going to affect him if you're you're doing a late closeout. But there's something to the morale of just, like, charging out there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. too many times I'm looking at guys, balls getting swung over to, to Dame or Malik Beasley or, or Bobby Portis, and it's like Bradley Beal's like – he puts his head down. Like, the play is not – oh, he ain't even shot the ball yet, bro. Like, Put a hand up. Do something. Run out there. Make a noise. Stomp your foot. Clap mm-hmm. your hands. Like something, <laughs> bro. It's so crazy that y'all are giving this little of an effort when these games are super important for y'all. Because y'all go out there and play like this and, and be in a playing tournament. You not being whoever falls to the eight seed. And then if it's Lakers Warriors, don't let it be Braun or Steph to get to the playoff. You're not, you're not getting in there, bro. You're gonna be in Cancun the next day. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm so good off this Suns team. I'm gonna get off my my soapbox and, and rant right now. But that game, like I, I watched it back, and I just, I cannot cannot believe how piss poor their defense was. On top of the offensive struggles that we've already highlighted, like the the your turn, my turn, no type of flow, motion, set to just be like ISO sometimes. I can't – it's so frustrating to watch them play basketball sometimes. and They have no business being that poor on the defensive side of the ball because that was 100% just effort, bro. I think – and you, you you hit everything on the head, but it really, it really just comes down to roster construction. Like, we said it when they made the Beal trade. It was like, why? Like – you know, like we did, like why, yeah. like you don't. You have KD, you have Booker, and your thought pro- with no depth, by the way, like very little depth, but like still assets to you know try to make something work as far as building a good team around them. And your first thought is like, we need another scorer. Like we need another like aging superstar scorer who's also a little injury prone. Like that just to me just doesn't make sense. Um, it's like we said, it's, it's literally a worse version of the Brooklyn Nets team, because like you said, at least at the very, very least with that Brooklyn Nets team, it's like, bro, these guys are all in their prime playing. Like these are like MVP caliber play, like Kyrie Irving to a little lesser extent, but still right. on any, any given night, these are like MVP caliber guys who all were playing like when they were on the court or playing good basketball and can literally all combine to just flat out just outscore you. Like, worst case scenario, they're just going to put up buckets and outscore you. These guys, like I said, it's your turn, my turn. One of these guys gets hot, and maybe, maybe he wills them to a win. Like, that's about it. It's never like, oh, it's an avalanche coming from all, like, all across the court. Like, Bill's going crazy, and Book is going crazy, and KD's going crazy. It's like, no. It's like, oh, this is a book night? Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Katie's gonna get you a little twenty, his little twenty-five, whatever. Oh, it was a KD night. All right, cool. Like, it's not enough. It's literally not enough. Your offense is not overwhelming enough to make up for the lack of defense, make up for the make up for the lack lack of depth. It's just, it's just not. So, I just think it really comes down to poor roster construction. And we talked about that because I believe they had got a new owner when that happened. He just seems like a guy who just wants to make splash moves, and mm-hmm. I want to win now. Let's just get the let's just get the best names and the most star power, and we're just gonna roll the ball out there. We're just gonna we're just gonna hoop, which is dumb when you see a team like the Nuggets literally win off of the fact that their team fits like a like a glove, like it fits literally. so perfect, so perfect, like. No, it's just, to me, it, it never made sense. And they're not, like, going under the radar as far as, like, h- kind of how disappointing the season is. But we got to remember, like, when they first made the build trade, obviously you had your people, like me and you, were kind of, like, skeptical about it. 
But there was a lot of people that were like, you know, this is like championship or bust. Like these, this it's the Nuggets and it's the Suns. Like it was like it's right there, right there. Right. And now it just seems like everyone's like, eh, yeah, it's whatever. Like it's it's the Suns. Like bro, there were real expectations coming into the season for the Suns, especially after making that move. So they're kind of like flying on their radar as far as how disappointing the season has been. Um, but yeah, like I said, like you could have you could have seen this coming. For the fact you that, like, sh- you, you should have, if you listened to the Off the Glass podcast, you would have. That's facts. That that is facts. You would have known that. Look, they're all not going to be. They're not going to play all eighty-two, all three of them. You know, there's barely going to be times where they're all on the, all on the court. Even when they are on the court, this is still not a good roster. It's just not. So it's it's a disappointment. But yeah, man, at this point, I don't really know. Like, you're, you're too deep in. I don't know what to tell you. Like. The, 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 the holes were glaring before y'all even rolled the ball out from the, the tip off, bro, from the first game of the season. Like, they had no point guard. They got no one really to defend. They got no depth behind these people or behind these, these star players. It, it was it was tough from the jump, to be honest with you. Yeah, I just – it. there's no – going back to what you said about, like, all three of them not being super overwhelming – that even gets me a little bit even more frustrated because there's not enough times where, like, even in this game, with no Giannis, your only rim protector on the floor for Milwaukee pretty much is Brooke if he's there. And then between KD, Book, and Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard's got to be guarding someone, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in a league where, and y'all can't just say I'm just saying this now, Braun said it on his podcast, where so much of it is matchup hunting at all times. How is Damian Lillard allowed to just stand in the corner and guard whoever's over there? Like the whole first, like first half of the first quarter didn't put him in the action one time. Like that is that. As much as I just was like, I don't want to hear nothing about y'all getting on Frank Vogel for his defense. That's coaching, bro. Mm-hmm. You got to, like, you have got to understand. I don't care how good any of those three top scorers are, bro. Make it easier. Put the worst defenders in the action. That's how you turn stuff into avalanches. Make Damian Lillard have to guard somebody. Make these guys have to really respect all three of them at once instead of just KD go stand over there and just be uninvolved. I could fall asleep in the corner. I don't got to worry about it. Like it's so, I don't, I don't understand it, bro. I, I don't get it at all. It feels so, so simple. And I'm sure I'm probably oversimplifying it a bunch, but it, it, it really like baffles me that it's this difficult to get all three of them involved like this and then really again it might go back to your point like they don't have a true true point guard like they've got Devin Booker trying to carry both roles that at was, the same time that was always my biggest problem with it. like because I, I did it literally is like you're taking Devin Booker and kind of going away from his main strength which is scoring the basketball like mm-hmm. that's what I want him to do I don't want him worried about getting anyone involved but himself like yeah. He's an elite scorer. I want you to just be an elite scorer. Like, we'll have somebody that will find time to get Katie the ball. We'll find time to get all these other guys the ball and get you the ball. But I want you worried about scoring. And then it will help if you're not worried about playmaking. Maybe you can help a little bit on the defensive end as well. It's like, it, it's, I don't know. I, that, that was always my biggest problem. And with the Suns in general, it's, it's also tough, too, because, like I said, Katie is still playing great ball. And he's doing a lot too. Like he's not strictly just scoring. Like he's actually he even said it a lot a lot of times like in his interviews and stuff like that. He's out here, he's defending, he's trying to rebound. Like he's he's that's trying to be a more all around player, mainly because that's kind of what they need. And he's kind of been <laughs> desperately. Yeah, he's kind of been trying to fill that void and, and do whatever they need to win. But I would have loved it if you can have like if he was on a team with guys who can defend, guys who can rebound, where he can literally just – he can help out in those aspects, still be an all-around player, but mainly just worry about being KD. So right. it's tough because, you know, he's getting older. He's not he's not getting any younger. It's 
it's it's kind of wasting his abilities a little bit. It's, it's a little bit of an it's a little bit annoying because. Right. I mean, I can't really fault him either because it seems like wherever he goes, this is the type of roster construction that he kind of wants. So right. I, this I, is his decision. I ain't. You can't fault nobody but him. He the yeah, one who wanted to go to Phoenix. Yeah, I, I can't fully like it absolved him from this because you know, same thing with the Nets, same thing with this. But it would have been nice to see him on a team that has solid role players, solid people to to fill in those gaps as far as or fill in the holes, I should say, as far as defense, rebound, things like that. But yeah, I guess I can't really. Can't really give him that pass, unfortunately. Yeah, like he – when I think back to his whole career and it's like, A, I'm going to preface all of this by being like Kevin Durant pretty openly seems like a guy that does not care that much about like his legacy being defined by team accolades or what he was able to accomplish from like a ring perspective, which is <clears throat> like completely, totally fair. He doesn't seem really phased by it. Everybody mm-hmm. knows Kevin Durant, bar none, if you've watched him play basketball, is one of the best scorers we've ever seen. If not, definitely has an argument to be the best scorer we've ever seen. It's like he made the finals, the young OKC team. They never were able to get back over that hump. Left one to Golden State, won two finals, got to the third one, obviously tore his Achilles against the Raptors. They went on to lose that series, has not made it back to the final since on what is some would say two different super teams since then. I don't even necessarily really want to consider this Phoenix Suns team a super team. I, I get it. it. Right. It's a I feel like the the Nets one to your point really was because it was like it was KD. It was Kyrie. It was Harden. They still have a case to say if we were healthy we would have won. They still no, have hundred percent yeah and like I hate to even use a word in this way, but it's like the aura for that team was was a little bit different from this, <laughs> from this Phoenix team. No, no, no. We played wrong, like 16, 16 games together. Yeah. You're not wrong, though, because that, that Nets team was like legitimately was like, bro, if they're all healthy, like they might, they possibly could be unbeatable. That, that, that was a team that if they win it, like they're all healthy and they win it, that shakes up everything about everything we talk about with super teams. That's like, wow, maybe you really just need to put right, yeah. MVP type of guys on a team and you really <laughs> might just roll the ball out and go, yeah. ooh. But this Suns team was like, I'm not. Never, there was never a point where they all joined together. I was like, dang, this is like, they're overwhelming. They're going to be, no, I was not that worried. Yeah, no, I just, yeah, he, he, he made his bed, right? Like he decided to go to Phoenix. He's got to live with the the results of that, which is you're on a team with below average role players. And even in a year where you're getting a guy to step up in Grayson Allen, Grayson Allen be having nights where he go for 20 and 25 and they still lose by 15, <laughs> bro. If you get like you tell me you got KD, if I just told you blindly you got Kevin Durant, Booker, and Bill. And you're gonna have a role player step up and give you 25. That sounds like a recipe for a win automatically. That sounds like they're not losing. Right. So the fact that y'all still lose those games is like major, major, major red flag, bro. Major red flag. I wish Grace now was in the Lakers. <laughs> he could use a I could use a use a shooter. A B. Um, hooping. did I did I see that Gabe Vincent Vanderbilt and uh who's the third one? All three of them are not. They're done for the season. This is news to me. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Time out. This is new. Yo, Gabe Vincent. Maybe and maybe just was for the rest. Maybe. <laughs> Gabe Vincent Rob does blind, bro. What he, happened he, to his knee, bro? Bro, I don't know what whatever guard that we sign in the offseason just loves to just rob us blind because Kendrick Nunn had the worst bone bruise I've ever seen in my the history of sports. And then this guy, Gabe Vincent, just bro, I don't even know. Sounds like Vanderbilt. I, uh, Vanderbilt will return. Says he might, he, optimism, he might come back before the playoffs. I need Vando back, man. At this point, I don't really care about Gabe Vincent because delo has been stepping up. Mm-hmm. Gabe Vincent, even when he was playing, he wasn't even really doing much. But I, never, I guess he never really got acclimated because he was, you know, going, like never fully 100%, I guess. But 
at this point, it is what it is with the gay events and stuff, man. I'm I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing the Kendrick Nunn stuff again, bro. I don't, I don't blame you, not one bit. Yeah. Um, it's it is crazy to think though, like LeBron is thirty nine. Steph is. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure he's thirty five, right? Uh, thirty six. He actually his birthday was last week. Happy birthday, Happy Steph. Birthday, Steph. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's thirty. He's thirty six. Bronze thirty nine. It's like these guys are still putting up ridiculous, ridiculous numbers, and they're the nine and ten seed out west. It's what one of those teams, like if if this started today. One of them legitimately cannot make the playoffs. Someone has to go home after the 9-10 game. Teams aren't good. <laughs> they're not. Like, they're just no, the teams no, are not you're good. right. <laughs> the Warriors, like. And their, in, their well, impact, like, isn't. At least, like, their impact isn't. Obviously, they're not in their. I mean, Steph is closer to his prime, I'd say. But, yeah. like, prime LeBron's not a 9 seed, bro. I don't matter who you put around him, he's not nine seed. They're older. No, we, like they, I, I watched him take Delma freaking Jordan, a young Jordan Clarkson. This was Tristan before he started Thompson, hooping. Right. Isaiah a. Thomas, J. little J. Isaiah I. Thomas. D. Was Derek Rose not on that roster? Or he, he was, was on that roster. Yes, he was. No, no, no. He was there. Oh. D uh the old D Wade was Disgusting. super washed D Wade. Disgusting, bro. Took was, this to the Finals, bro. <laughs> I must say, like he's the impact just isn't as he can't take over games as he's like as he used to, which is which is one hundred percent understandable. Like it's right, <laughs> thirty nine, bro. You should eat most me. NBA legends are literally chilling at the crib, retired at your age four years ago. <laughs> right, bro shouldn't even be like a top fifty player in the league, let alone still playing at a top ten level. Jordan retired, came back, three-peated, retired again, came back for the Wizards, and retired all before the age that he is right now. Put that into context, bro. He's still putting up 26, 27 plus a night on any given night can give you 40. And he's giving you 40 in a different way than he would have given you 40 when he was 24. He giving you 40 because he's knocking down seven or eight threes. He's shooting a higher percentage than Steph this year. Which is, is he really? He was, yeah. It was like it was. Like, he's Ron shooting forty percent from three. Ooh. Obviously, 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 Steph yeah, is less shooting volume, way yeah. more. He's shooting yeah, way yeah. more. But hey, if you're a LeBron, listen, I'm not like a huge like LeBron. I'm not a LeBron versus Steph guy at all. Honestly, I honestly mm. I don't like the putting them guys against each other. But for the people that do, <laughs> one up, <laughs> hey, LeBron, check that box. <laughs> I bet you that's gonna be used as an argument one of these years. Like LeBron. Shot a higher percentage than Steph one year. I get. I guarantee <laughs> you, it will be used in that type of context. Yeah, you know LeBron fans go crazy. They definitely gonna gonna pull that stat out. Hundred percent. Man, what what, are, what is the league gonna do when them guys retire? Man, you know how they always talk about like the face of the league stuff. We're gonna be the new face of the league. That's bro, bro. Steph versus LeBron is still the biggest show in the NBA. No matter what. Every. It is. Every time I check the night slate and I see Warriors Lakers, I'm like, I ha if I can't watch it live, I'm penciling it in. It's like I gotta find an hour of my time to go back and rewatch it because mm. it's like genuinely we're reaching the point where it's like I I don't know how many of these we have left to watch. There's not there, there can't be that many more. Like we we might be sub ten if they don't play in the playoffs. Like For how real? many more years is LeBron really gonna play? And and Knock on wood, God forbid, but it's like at this level where it's like, bro, there's a tweet from like 2007 where dudes was like, thank God we don't got to have another 10 years of LeBron doing this. And it's like, here we are in 2024 and he's still going crazy. It's like the fact that he's able to do this at this age, like we got to appreciate it now in the moment. It's like I, anytime those two are playing, I got to I have to watch it. Mm -hmm. I have to, got to pencil it in, but... It's going to be tough, man, because I don't know what they're going to do, what the new matchup is. It's, obviously, it's not going to be – it can't be forced. It has to just be organic, but it's just been so good for so long. Like, Who do you think – who do you think 
in the league right now today really has like I'm talking for real for real because I've seen a lot of names get floated where it's like they're they're not gonna be the face, bro. Like who legitimately has a chance to become the next face of the NBA? Cause I got a handful of guys in mind. So this is the thing when I when all right, because the face of the league thing is not just about like we're talking about just face of the league, it's not just about best player in the league. That's a big no. thing though, but it's not like Jokic. Like no disrespect to him, he will not be the face of the league because he doesn't want to be the face of the league. He's not right. He, he he doesn't even care about it, which is fine, by the way. No, hundred percent. But you to be the face of the league, you have to you have to want to assume that that role. You know? Right, right. It takes on responsibility. You are like literally, like you're every, you're everything for like when people think NBA, people think of you. You know what I mean? You speak, right. speak about stuff like your word has weight, like holds weight around the league, things like that. Super, you gotta be super marketable. So, like a guy like Jokic is is out of it. Um, I honestly think a guy like Giannis, I don't, I don't know, I I don't even know why, because I feel like he's like he's not completely unmarketable. Like he's funny, like in his little dad joke way. But I don't know, yeah. I just don't think if I had to pick someone, it wouldn't be him. If I had to, I think his issue is he's he's too old. Like by the time LeBron retires, Le, like Giannis will. Probably be like, let's say, two years from now, at the yeah. earliest, LeBron, Giannis will be in his thirties. That is true. Yeah, it probably got to be a young, young. Right. Player. I just think he 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 overlaps too much. I feel you. I feel you. But personally, the number one person who I think will be the face of the league is Wimby for sure, because that is like my number one number one answer. He's checked every box. This every man be one. having great quotes. Like he's got he's got everything you will want out of a face of the league top type player, and he's already kind of got the the grip on like the young NBA fans mm-hmm. being the ridiculous seven foot five highlight real demigod type player. Mm-hmm. Like he's already got that type of appeal. He does great on the microphone. I'm here in San Antonio. They be, he does commercials for HEB, which is like the supermarket chain. He's funny. Like, he'd be after games giving insightful quotes. Like, he's got – It seems like he would want the, it. Right. He's got all the things that you would want to become the next legitimate face. I can't even see a guy like Luca doing that because you don't see Luca no. having that type of presence like that. But again, that comes down to a: Do you want to have all of that extra stuff? And if you don't, like genuinely, that's no knock on them. Because honestly, if I was in their shoes, I wouldn't want to be the face of the league. I don't want to have to do all this extra media and all that. Even like whatever extra would come with it, like my money off the contracts. If I'm already that good to even be in consideration, bro, I'm good, bro. I'm mm-hmm. Making like two hundred M's, bro. I'm straight. I don't need all that extra on top. But if that's something that you do desire, like. Credit to a guy like Wemby. Like, I think he genuinely could be that next guy to – and he would be the first international face, like, that's really, what, if you think historically. That's what I was going to say. Because one – one and also, to add on, Wemby's game will like, – I, I think everyone knows, like, there will be a point where he'll be the best player in the league because his impact on offense and defense will be insane. It'll be soon, bro. It's, it's going to be sooner than you think. It's going to be in a, in a few years for sure. <laughs> but I was going to say because do you think the face of the league has to be an American player? Because No. I, I almost would venture to say the NBA w- would be better for them to not, you know, give a little nudge, you know, a little extra couple of social media posts here and there to trying to prop up an international prayer, player because the game internationally is – better than it's ever been and it's only getting better and it's going to probably like exponentially get better with a guy like Wemby in the NBA. Like Wemby is genuinely a direct by- byproduct of the fact that the dream team went to France in 92. Mm-hmm. Like the type of global impact that that had but even deeper, the type of impact that that had in France because the Olympics just happened to be in Paris that year. Like, basketball boomed there as a big result of you have guys like Magic and Larry and Charles and Michael Jordan, like, going and playing in France. And so it's like, I I think they would be 
it, it would not surprise me if Adam Silver in the league like kind of made a conscious decision to like really try to prop up a guy like Wemby. Not saying that he's not kind of deserving are. of it. But no, yeah, like he's definitely deserving of it, but it seems like it's mutually beneficial for them too to be like, yeah, we got an international guy like that can really be the face of our, our league. Like let's push that so that we can get even more international talent going, even more international growth. You get more international fans, you get international dollars. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's a win, 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 win for everybody involved. hundred percent. hundred percent. I just think it's a uh, be interesting. The hundred percent, if it was a international player, because like I said, it would just grow the league even, even bigger than what it is now. If I would say though, if like I had to pick someone who was American, because all if they were all the best players in the league are international. It's just it is what it is. Like I said, the international the game is, three, yeah. is 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 better. It's the best it's ever been. If I had to pick someone who is American, who has potential to be the face of the league, to me, it's Anthony Edwards. Like, because I think we talked about it. He's so young. He's already at the point where, like, we you see the talent. Like, you see, I believe, I believe a lot of people believe he will, he can be the best player on a championship level, a championship team. If not now, then like, obviously, he will grow into that. He plays on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing, though, is like the character, the the the, the right. charisma. Like, that. I feel like that plays a factor. Like, people will like you, and also, I think your game in a way, has to, like, match face of the league. It has to work with the face of the league, right? Like, Wimby, like, 7'5", can shoot, can dribble. Like, bro, like, come on. Like, what are we talking about? Right. It's an attraction in itself. Anthony Edwards. We just talked – we literally just talked about his highlight reel being better than a lot of people's career highlights. Like, the dunks, the high flying, the blocks, like, the clip. Like, that's another reason why I got, like, Jokic. Even if he wanted to be the face of the league, it would just be tough because his game – to, I think your game has to be appealing to the casual viewer as well. Because a lot of casuals know that, like, bro, LeBron dunk, like, prime LeBron is flying around, dunking, blocking. Like, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's entertaining to the casual viewer. Same with a guy like Anthony Edwards. And also to the casual viewer, like, bro, you see someone at 7 5 coming up the court shooting from the logo, like you just did. You're like, bro, what? what is that? So I think <laughs> literally. <laughs> so I think your game also has to match the face of the league. And I think that Anthony Edwards would have that potential. If, like I said, if it had to be an, uh, an American player, but I do agree with you. I think it probably would be better for the league. If it was a guy like Wimby to step up and be the face of the league. Yeah. They, they would be able to do things internationally that the NBA has never done before. And I, even if it fully happens organically, like he just genuinely continues to ascend at the rate that he is and becomes the player that we believe he's going to become very soon. Like we're right now today, as of this is March 22nd, 2024. What is Wemby? Is he a top hundred player? Is he a top 50 player? Like, just more, than that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm that. just starting super vague. Cause I, I think right now today, he's probably a top, 30 feels right. 25 might be pushing it a little bit, but I think I could probably make a good case for him to be a, a top 30 NBA player right now. I think I think 30 is a lock. I think he's easily a top 30 player. I think I can argue my way for him to be a top 25 player. I think by the by, by this time next season he's he, he's probably top 15, bro. I put put it this way too, because I seen I forgot I, I always forget who <laughs> I will be watching a bunch of videos. I always forget. I never get nobody credit. I'll be feeling bad. Cause I don't be wanting to steal nobody's takes. But a dude was like Wimby has taken leaps throughout this year. Like you know right. how guys make leaps like next season. All right, he like he's now he's more efficient. Next season, all right, he added the three ball. Like Wimby has made yearly leaps within his rookie year. Yes. Which is like that's why when you say like bro he will be the best in the league soon like I wholeheartedly believe that because bro the improvement just from this year alone is ridiculous like 
it's insane. his feel for the game at least 19 is like it's stupid bro it's stupid mm-hmm. like it's he insane. his ability just to to be able to create for himself at that size is obviously just he's he's gifted athletically and and is super skilled but a lot of times bro he's not even forcing like he he's just making the right basketball plays on top of the fact that he's going to make an all defensive team this year like it's just, he's giving you three and a half blocks a game bro like when you really think about it bro this is the worst he'll ever be in his whole career which is like nuts this is the this bro if he never got, let's just say Wimby never got better let's just say he's this forever he could be a Hall of Famer if you had a better team around. Didn't him. we say this though? Didn't we say <laughs> this in the, before the season started? It was we like, yo, the offense could literally not even take off to that level. Mm-hmm. The defense alone is obs- generational, bro. He's a seven <laughs> foot five protector. <laughs> he genuinely could make the Hall of Fame off the fact that he might get multiple defensive players a year, bro. And here we yeah. are. And not even done with his rookie year, his offense is, I would personally, I think, already a good chunk better than I thought it would be this year. I thought he would Same. struggle a little bit more. After that, like, second month, he was like, oh, no, this is how it's moving? I got it. Facts. Tween, tween, pull up three. Tonight, right. off the tip-off, pull up from the logo, like, seven, <laughs> five. Could you imagine going back? To what's his name? James Nation, the guy that invented basketball, do out here cut a hole in a peach basket and stapled it to a ceiling and was like, look, y'all throw a ball into that and created a whole new game. Could you imagine like plucking him into a time machine and being like, yo, watch this seven foot five guy hit it off the tip, cross pull up from three? He would probably my like, bro, bro. What? <laughs> what? This was a kid's game. Like, bro, what? Yeah, bro, like, it, it's insane. He's the offense is already on another level. The defense is already doing things that we expected it to do. I literally just got a notification that says wild Wemby sequence. Victor gets the huge rejection on one end and the ridiculous alley oop on the other. Like, bro, he hasn't even finished year one yet. But this is the and y'all it. said we were we were glazing because we said we would trade. Devin Booker for the first overall pick. I just watched. When has Devin Booker ever been in the conversation to be face of the league, bro? Bro, it is. Oh, that's what I was going to say, bro. It's not. There's not even. There hasn't even been many faces of the league. Like, no, face of the league is not. Once face you of the league is not. Status, it's, it's like your stamp cemented for the rest of your career, bro. Face of the league is not like the MVP, the best, like, there's been, obviously, like, Magic, I don't want to go, like, Matt early, I don't, I don't know, Matt, yeah, I know there's, like, Magic Bird, right, that Jordan. brings you into, right, for Magic Bird, you get the transition to Jordan, yeah, then I'd say from Jordan, I'd say, because, there was, a, I, I think it's a little gap period, I genuinely think there's a stint of time after Jordan retires where you got late 90s, early 2000s, where mentally, from what I've heard and what I understand, I feel like the biggest face you could put there prior to Kobe kind of getting to that point is probably AI, to be honest with you. At, like at least from I mean, an in, like an influential, influential standpoint. Yeah, but like AI was like. He was him, bro. And then he, obviously Kobe really ascended to that point. That's interesting. I don't know if I, I honestly don't think I ever heard that. That's interesting. Like in the because I I to me, if I'm just looking back at like that little tween period, I'd really just think it's like a gap period. Because if you think about it, because even I don't think AI was ever the best player in the league, though. I yeah, don't think he was, no. never was at that point where he was the best. It at least, like I said, at least the face of the league has at some point been the best player in the league. I don't think AI yeah. was ever that. If we're talking years to, so like you said, what it's like early 2000s. Mm-hmm. See, even a guy like Tim Duncan was like a, is like a Jokic type of guy. Like he's never really right. been the face of the league. So I think maybe Shaq, maybe AI. Like I think that's a conversation right there. If I yeah. had to pick somebody, 
But then after that, I think it's definitely Kobe. Then I think it's right. Braun. Then I it's Braun. It, it, here we are, twenty twenty four. I will say <laughs> facts. I will say it's one hundred percent Braun as far as like has been the face of the league. I do think though, like it's like Braun. Then later, as the later has been, it's like Steph. Like Steph, 100%. he's he has to get a nod. It can't just be like Braun, no one else, because Steph like is also a huge like attraction. So I think it's like Steph, like right here. So yeah. I think it was like Braun up to like probably like to like Steph MVP or like 2016 ish. Steph then it's MVP like Steph one B. Yeah, he was doing shit that had people being like, "Bro, are we playing the game the right way?" Like I don't know. If you know, if and the answer was no. <laughs> and the answer was no. They changed everything because of him, bro. Like yeah, his yeah. influence is insane. So he's definitely like a one B. I think Braun just will always have that little notch above, but. Yeah. You definitely can't like discredit him as far as saying like it, it's just been Ron this whole time. No, nah, he'll, yeah, yeah, he'll he'll retire before Steph, so it probably will be Steph until he mm-hmm. retires. Then it will be would be. Yeah, I think that's probably the most logical the timeline to get there, just because. So you think about it, like it was just said, Steph is thirty six. Even if he played till forty. Bro, when he retires, Wimby's Wimby's like twenty four. That's prime. Yeah, now nah, he's prime, there. Right, he, he right might there. take it from him before he retires. He might take it from him. But you see what I'm saying? That's why I feel like a guy like Giannis and even low key like a Luca or a Shea, maybe not because it's like at that time they'll be late twenties, about to hit thirty four yeah, years from now. Yeah, because all of the faces of the league took it early. Like Jordan took it from like Magic. I say like Magic early. Well, if we're thinking he took it like 91, he was like mid 20s at that point. He's like 26, 27 when he won that but, first one. But, but I guess before that, he kind of had started to get, he had gotten considered in that, that way. The, the hype around him was crazy. He just didn't win. But he was yeah. like, he was out there hooping though. Like the team just wasn't that, wasn't as good. He was, and he wasn't winning yet. But I'd still say though, like he was the best player in the league. The people just had that narrative around him was like, ah, he's just, and they was, they was, Treat him like Devin Booker. He was like empty stats guy. Empty like, stats. Man, no left hand. Scorer. Yeah. <laughs> we done with the night. That's good <laughs> that we never tonight. talked about that. That's funny. We done with the night. Nah, he... it's, it's funny, but it, like it's not even worth diving too into. Because it, like not. you said, you, you've already said it multiple times on this episode. Like comparing eras is a little bit of like you kind of just – it's not worth the time, bro. bro There's no it. real good way to do it. You're just going to be like shouting at a brick wall. You're people. never gonna find people that are die hard being like, not nah, the '90s was the best. Versus people being like, did you watch this game? Michael Jordan dribbled left four times. You're never gonna find a common ground between those two arguments, bro. It's it's just not the same game. It's no point of even getting into that. But right, it was uh, yeah. I think you know Jordan. I'd still say he took it a little bit earlier. Then I said, I, like I said, I I think it's at least somewhat of a gap here. I think if you can't definitively say who it is, it probably is like just like some sort of a gap period. Then I think Kobe was still young because he was winning early, even though it was like with Shaq as well, but it was still young. And then, yeah, LeBron took it like hell. Le- LeBron took it. LeBron was ready to face the league when he was in high school, bro. LeBron took it On very young. the cover of Sports Illustrated as a high school student, bro. Yeah, he took it super young. So yeah. crazy. Wow. Craziness, bro. Bro, we're gonna have to do these episodes more often. I'm, I'm bro, liking I love the, the I love liking the flow. flow. I mean, honestly though, if we're thinking about it, bro, if we really think next face to the league, probably Austin Reeves. If we Could really be. you know what I'm saying? Cause like he better than way better than Wimby. You know what I mean? He get this is the worst Austin Reeves will ever be. <laughs> Facts, bro. Facts. <laughs> Shoot, and like I it's funny. Um, I was listening, one of my coworkers, shout out, shout out Cam, the Fat Cats podcast. They do something where it's like every single episode number, they do a segment where it's like uh what is it like first first favorite and forgotten person that wore a that jersey number that correlates with the episode number. And so for 47, they were talking about uh Andre Kirilenko. I know like, yo, yeah. a- AK 47. It's like, yo, could you imagine? AK forty seven with AR fifteen, lethal, mm, <laughs> lethal, <laughs> lethal. 
That's funny. That's fine. I like that little concept. That's pretty cool. No, it's, it's fine. Hey, bro, the pulls that they be like names that they like 47. It was like uh, Kiko Alonso. It was like, yo, I haven't heard Kiko Alonso's name in years. That's bro. crazy. That's wild. Rookie hit won rookie of the year and got traded. The next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Bro. <laughs> um, I don't even know how you've gone this far without talking about it. Uh, Kyrie hit a, a left hook. Game yeah, winner? bro, I seen that alive, and I was like, "What, bro?" Like, put put it this way, anybody watching this, try to shoot that shot in the gym on an empty gym by yourself. Try to. I, I saw to I saw a shot. guy do it, and it took him like six tries. Bro, try to shoot that. Sh- it is not like this is. Let's just put the degree of difficulty right. He's coming. I believe he's coming off a screen, mm-hmm. right. He he gets the ball on the run. He has a seven footer Jokic, who, to his credit, is keeping up with him. To be honest, to a right. good extent, he's dribbling towards the middle of the floor. He's running. It's not it's not a floater to where you're running towards the basket like that. What you practice, left hand floater. It's not that. It's to the side, but it's not also it's not also not like just a hook shot like a Kareem sky hook. It's like a it's literally like a form shot on the run with Jokic hand. Contesting your you, face, yeah, he's kind of shielding it off and is just like fading to the left. Shot it, cash. That is such a hard shot. I don't think people realize how hard that is, bro. I don't think I can do that on my right. Like that's a, no. in an empty. Gym. I'm left handed. I probably can't hit that. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> like who is out here practicing running hooks in 2024 as a guard for the win with a seven footer, a seven foot hand in your face? Someone hey, asked, come on, bro. Someone asked Kyrie a couple years ago if he felt they felt like he had mastered basketball, and his response to that question was, "Nah, I I still need to get better at my hook shot." Bro, sickle, bro. He's a he's a basketball savant. That's why people say. to have that in your bag to pull out at that moment. That's why people say he's the most skilled player ever, bro. That's why people saying that people like. Who is the most like aesthetically pleasing NBA player to watch? Because I feel like Kyrie. the answer has to be Kyrie, bro. Like Kyrie. they be putting his highlights to like the silky smooth jazz on Instagram, and it fits too perfectly. Bro, it's beautiful to watch, bro. It's Ky- it's Kyrie because he has the hand. I mean, honestly, it's he has the handles, he has the finishing. Because honestly, there'd be some times, bro, where his layups look better than dunks. Like I, like, his layups 100%. are more like. Beautiful to watch than some dunks, bro. Like I'd rather. Did you see that, how bro. he got his layups to the way that it is practicing on a backboard with the hole in the middle? I, I don't think I heard of that. I think I heard of that. I don't think I seen anything. There's a picture going around of it. It's literally looks like if somebody, somebody just took a shotgun and just <laughs> the middle of your backboard. So it's like if the inside of the square, it was just you could throw a ball through it. That's so you got how he was off the off the. Top so he of the was glass. getting crazy English to score in his backyard hoop, bro. It was like now he knows every angle to spin the ball to make it get like, bro. That's the type of stuff. Like I love those stories because it's like when you watch it happen, you're like, bro, how did you, how did you know? Feel so confident to to spin it like that from that angle. That high off the glass, it was going to get in. It's like, where do you you be practicing that? And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've been practicing that since I was a child, bro. That's how it's that was my circumstance that I had to, to learn how to do layups like that. That's crazy, and now it's like bro. one of his greatest weapons. It's it's crazy, bro. It's, it's just like how you're saying dribbling with the with the paper bag over the ball for the handles, like, bro, that stuff. It's just, it's it's so. That's so crazy, bro. It's so cool how that stuff comes back later on down the line. Now it's like it makes your life so much easier. Could you? Because it's not like he just did it for a day. He did it for a week. like he was probably repping that constantly 100%. over and over and over again. Hundred percent. It had got to got to to be that good at it. Have mm-hmm. to. Um, you got anything else you want to touch on before we get to the to the little games we have at the end? Um, let me just take a quick look at the, I think I think we hit on everything that's kind of going on right now. I just want to make sure we hit everything. Yeah, I, th- I think we hit everything for the most part. Okay. Shout out Jalen Suggs gonna be on my all defensive teams when that when that comes out. 
Mm-hmm. I was re-watching their game against the Pelicans last night. Literally, and, and, like he is like how they talk about ball hawking safeties is they just always find the ball. That's what it feels like watching him sometimes. It's like every time a shot is going up, it's like, how are you in the vicinity? You can't be guarding everyone. <laughs> but you're like always there. <laughs> how is that possible? Uh, he gives a like, bro, ridiculous amount of effort. He knocked down, I think, like six or seven threes in that game. So shout out Jalen Suggs, bro. He's been he's been going crazy. This Magic team, quietly, bro. They just dealing with injuries in the middle of the season, but they are the four seed in the East right now. And could it's not out of the realm of possibilities, unlikely, but it's not out of the realm. They could jump up as high as two. Let the yeah. Bucks mess around. They only three games back from Milwaukee. Like that I, would be crazy. I also want to say complete side because I've been like kind of keeping track of this. Um, the Pelicans are like dismantling. Well, they, the game's over. Dismantled the Heat a little bit. Guess how many points Zion had? Probably not even that many. Twenty-two. You're like four. When I checked it. In the beginning of the of the third so, quarter, that was no, nah, that's a glitch, bro. <laughs> he had two points. No, no, no. When I checked it in the fourth quarter, no, no, no. It was like nine minutes left in the third. He had two points. Cause I'm like, it, it was up. I'm like, oh, sorry, I must be, you know, what I'm saying he's probably going crazy. Two points. Now he has four points. It becomes hooping. CJ had thirty, but like, this, I'm not losing to no Pelicans team with Zion putting up four points. Jose Alvarado off the bench in this game, plus. 27 in 31 minutes, bro. Grant that photo. Like, yo, nah, bro. You think he can do that ma- the, the playoff magic this year? No. Nah. I like, made the video and no. Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> made, I made video. that video. Oh, talking about this, <laughs> this is the most dangerous team nobody talked about. <laughs> Ever since I made the video, Jimmy Butler done came out and was talking about it's that time of the year. We about to, we about to, we about to lock it in. We about to dial it in, bro. Hang the phone up, bro. It's, it's <laughs> over, man. Jimmy Y'all be, be pissing me off, man. They just so inconsistent, and like I can't, I can't put my faith in them. Like we're getting, we're getting too close to the the finish line for you Should be Still on be already. Doing some of this, right? Like you got to should be it on a little bit. Yeah. But hey, they almost lost in the play in. It made it to the finals, so we. I don't know, man. Never, you guess you could never really count them out. If they do that again, I'm letting the viewers and listeners of the Off the Glass podcast know first. I will buy a Jimmy Butler jersey. If you come to the YouTube, you'll see it. It will be right there at the top of this little bookcase right here. Let this Heat team make it all the way to the finals, bro. Let them do it. You got my word. That junk will be beautifully put up there. I'll put a I'll put a bobblehead or something next to it. <laughs> he got it, bro. I there's no way. It's just no way they pulled us off. No, it's, it's not, it's as not. good as as Bam has played this year, and I didn't even know because all defense is positionless. You could really have like five centers on all defensive first team. So Bam yeah. is definitely going to make an all defensive team this year. If he doesn't, literally is a crime if, mm. if the voters don't get him on this year. But he's been playing great. His offense has been again improved on the the hub aspect of his game being able to facilitate and score for himself his mid-range game is great it just it's not enough it's not enough bro when jimmy's only played 48 games tyler hero's only played 36 games like it's y'all gotta get everybody together and healthy you cannot continually rely on just the fact that it's like oh it's the postseason we're gonna turn it on he culture because bro Y'all make it out of the plan. If y'all make it out of the plan and beat Milwaukee or Boston, I'm going to lose my mind. Bro, they, but it, it, it should be no way, but bro, I would they, lose my mind. They do that, bro. They got, like, like the Illuminati, bro. I'm not hearing it. It's Illuminati, bro. <laughs> Eric's so, supposed to be working some magic in the back room. Side note, side note. I'd seen this joke, and I was crying on Twitter. Somebody said... <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton is basketball to a tug of Iloa because he's been playing so bad the second half of the season. Dang. I was crying. That was so funny because he has he been, has been in a 
crazy shooting slump. Like, yeah. disgustingly bad. Bro. <laughs> it's been horrible. My man's shooting tour dates. I, I feel bad for him because he was talking about people on social media been getting on him. It's like, bro, as an NBA player, bro, you got to bro, delete that, bro. Don't even be up there, dog. It's no point. If, if you got a brand deal or something, bro, post your little ad and delete the app back. Don't even be up there. Hey, bro, I don't even be checking our comments sometimes. Dudes be up here just no regard, like just wilding out. Bro. I don't have the time for that. Nope. I can't imagine what an NBA player do or like any sort of celebrity. Or right, because I know they be athlete. getting DMs crazy. So mm-hmm. my parlay. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> not going for none of that. Um, Before we get to the games. Got to hit up our hit up our sponsor. Make sure y'all know Seat Geek. We doing all this talk about playing tournament and playoffs. They around the corner. I know some of y'all live in these cities. Some of y'all in Miami. Y'all gonna want to go. Y'all in the yams, right? Y'all gonna want to go to that mm-hmm. playing game. Use code off the glass when you get your tickets. All one word off the glass gets you twenty dollars off your first Seat Geek order. You go on the app. You see which seats are listed in the green. You get a good deal. It's a win 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 for everybody involved. And if you use code off the glass, you get twenty dollars off your first seat get seat geek order. You save some money, we get some money. Everybody's happy, man. So so use the win promo win. code. Enjoy the games. Win, win, um, win. I know I said we had the March Madness draft, but I'm calling a slight audible, and I've got some start bench cuts for you to do first before we get there. Mm, okay. Three different ones. Hopefully, three different videos. Hopefully they do numbers. We're going to see. Real simple ones. You're going to see the the theme is mad easy. So I need you to start bench cut these three icons. Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Tracy McGrady. Start bench cut. Start D. Wade. Bench T-Mac. Cut Melo. Cut mellow. Wow. I was gonna, we're talking about that. basket, like playing basketball, or just like icons, or just like they're. Like, yeah, no, that, I, I just <laughs> trying to think of. I was trying to think of okay. a word that would like catch. Oh, okay. Watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, oh, are we going off their aura or like? We going nah, off? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. If we're talking basketball, give me D Wade, give me T Mac, and we're cutting mellow. Mm, I feel why like T Mac over mellow. I think T Mac. It, like T Mac is like old Paul George, like his like skill set wise. You ever hear people talk about T Mac like NBA players? Kobe used to say T Mac gave gave them fits. Like T Mac's game was elite. That's T- actually a fantastic comparison because T Mac is like six eight six nine with dummy crazy handles. Bro, the way people talk about or older people talked about T Mac, that's the way people will talk about Paul George because like right. accolades wise, like. Nah, like winning, why anything like that? Like no, but bro, you we, you hear all the time all these like high school kids or people getting into, just coming to the NBA, they be like, my goal is Paul George, like he's my greatest player ever. Because we talking about just skill set wise, like he's shoot, dribble, dunk, defense, like prime Paul George, like every literally everything. He's a two K right. player, so like I just want to say he's a demigod, Bill, bro. <laughs> for real though, he really is six, like you, six eight six nine point four with. Lockdown badges, bro. <laughs> bro, if you if you be like, yo, I want the perfect NBA player. Like, forget about like Ackley and, and any of that. Like, bro, just give me the perfect NBA player. You're gonna make a tall player, like six eight, mm-hmm. that can dribble. Paul George handles is like elite for his size. That can bang threes. That is athletic. That can play defense. That's Paul George, bro. It really is. Yeah. So, and I think T Mac is like old Paul George. Fair, fair enough. I look, I honestly would probably have, I probably would have the same three because T Mac, T Mac's offensive game, the handles were a step above what Carmelo could do. But Carmelo, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, he did have threat. The- <laughs> triple threat is vicious, bro. It was. Open in a get open in a phone booth. Facts. Next one I have for you here, I need you to start bench cut. These three point guards, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, and Chris Paul. Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul. 
Give me Chris Paul. I'm a star Chris Paul. Mm. Mm. I mean, Steve Nash, though, was. I think I'm cutting. I'm cutting Jason Kidd. I think I'm cutting Jason Kidd in general. Okay. So it's really between do I want to start Chris Paul or do I want to start Steve Nash? It sounds crazy to not start the guy with two MVPs. We know one of them is like, funny anyway. It is. It is. <laughs> But I like Chris Paul. Like, it's weird because Chris Paul is like, when I view Chris Paul, I view him as like the ultimate winner. But he has not won anything, which is kind of crazy, bro. <laughs> I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. kind of crazy. Give me the point, God. I'm gonna start Chris Paul. I'm gonna bench Steve Nash, and I'm gonna cut Jason Kidd. I just Fair that's play. me personally. Maybe a little biased too, because Chris Paul growing up was my favorite point guard. He still kind of is my favorite point guard ever. It's like, it's all opinionated. Yeah, it's you all know opinionated. I don't think you could really go wrong. Nah, nah. As Instagram, nah. As we're idiots. That's a terrible pick, bro. We could have put this, clears. What are you talking about? We could have put it in any order. They're gonna say the same stuff, bro. <laughs> One of these days, you should post three of the same, like three. These, three of the same. The three switch it every single time. They go back. Jason Kidd clears. Chris Paul cleared. Steve Nash two MVPs. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna win. It's like you're a social win. media experiment. Mac, you're not gonna win, bro. It's just somebody's always going to be mad, no matter what you post. Young Jason Kidd on the New Jersey Nets was he was like that though. I that version of Jason Kidd, I he was different bro the passes that he was throwing away he would really get guys open for lobs at the rim one of the better rebounding guards too mm -hmm. um and he could strap up on the defensive side of the ball man jason kill was, was, was crazy later in his you know later in his career he got the the jumper going but early on bro that was that was ace and kid he had no j yeah, no jumper he i i was never really like a huge fan of jason kid to be honest so like i don't know why i just you know, you have people you just gravitate to. You have people just like, yeah. Like, I was yeah. never, like, a big Jason Kidd guy anyways. Like, I was, like I said, Chris Paul, growing up, my favorite number was three. Like, I, like because of Chris Paul, like, uh, he was my favorite point guard. So You got to think, too, though, like, Jason Kidd, by the time we're, like, really old enough to be watching live basketball, Jason Kidd is starting, like, he's in his decline. Chris yeah. Paul was going, like, we still was old enough to see Chris Paul and the Hornets then get to Lob That's, City Chris Paul. Exactly. And I, Jason Kidd, to me, was never – like, I've watched older Jason Kidd, but I didn't – he was never a guy like – there's some people who I have went back and, like, watched their game for real. Jason Kidd was never a guy that kind of, like, let me go really deep dive Jason Kidd on the it's net. Worth it. like, it it's probably worth is, it. He probably is, I just he never done flashy. it. He was flashy. He was flashy. Um, handles was tight. And he was just – he was a playmaker for real. It's mm -hmm. also very funny to see. I've seen at least two or three people find out like live reaction that Jason Kidd is black. A lot of people just think he's white. <laughs> it's that? like, bro, yeah. If y'all go Google Jason Kidd on the Phoenix Suns, bro, had a little a little high top. Oh, dear. Or before he before he rocked the Scabaldi. People don't like people be thinking just all mixed people is just white. <laughs> hey, I just all white. <laughs> bro, he lost the hair. In it. it was a lot over. Of people was confused. He's over. Got one more for you here. Honestly, it's probably the hardest one. Oh, boy. I need you to start bench cut these power fours. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowitzki. It's, it's, it's the trio. It's the big trio. <laughs> so you said power fours, I'm like, it's going to be Tim, KG, Dirk. I KG already Duncan. knew. Now, right. give me the rankings. Tim Duncan, KG, Dirk Nowitzki. And so that's good. why you're wrong. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even say that was my order. I'm literally just making sure that was the three. Oh, yeah. That was the three. So, Tim, I mean, Tim Duncan has to be one because Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward ever. Fair. So, Tim has to be one. So, it's really between KG and Dirk Nowitzki. Personally, I'm not going to lie to like Dirk. Dirk's playoff run was elite. He had dunks. In my opinion, still the best ever. Then I would listen. There's no, you really honestly though. That's really like a huge case to read the best like playoff run ever from like a, a like a superstar. The the Sweet. degree of difficulty of who they beat, like swept the swept Kobe and the Lakers that, after they're coming off of a ring in the second round, then beat 
KD and Russell Westbrook and Harden to get to the finals against the newly formed Heatles and beat them in six while he had the flu. I see. Yeah, you see the jersey in the back, man. That's the, you're the biggest I'm always fan gonna, I know. I'm always going to ride for my boy, man. <laughs> 11 year old me, I never, ever, ever forget watching the end of game six and being like, he did it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, you really, bro, I only, I know another Dirk fan in my life, bro. I don't know anyone who's as it's de- Dirk definitely fan not up there, bro. It's not many of them. I met many more in Texas. Up there, bro. You're not nobody care about dirt like that. That's an obscure player on the <laughs> Mavericks, bro. But yeah. that, bro, in Dallas, bro, beloved, bro. Dirt probably will never have to pay for anything ever, anywhere shouldn't. in the whole city. It shouldn't, shouldn't have. Yeah. To. But uh, but yeah. So we talking about Tim Duncan's one. Mm-hmm. After all that, I think I might. I might. I kind of want to slide Dirk just because, like, I his run was impressive, but I like defense. I'm always been a defensive guy, so I think I'm. So I'm think I'm gonna do KG two and then Dirk okay. three. So I'm gonna uh, start Tim Duncan, bench KG, cut Dirk. But it's very close between the last two though, because Dirk's run was super impressive. I'll never knock anybody for putting Kevin Kevin Garnett over Dirk. Anything after that, if we're just talking those three. Um, like Giannis. I've seen people start right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people people start to float Giannis in. Uh, we can have the, those discussions, but it's like we can't we can't disrespect Dirk a little that that much. Kevin Garnett, the the, the defender that he was, he might genuinely be one of the best communicators in NBA history. The way that he really was able to sit in the back, of, nah, screen hit, nah, you go. Nah. Like mm-hmm. he really was a vocal leader on that side of the floor. He also was um, an asshole. Right. What? Bro, the story I will never, ever, ever forget. This man, on they're playing the Spurs on Mother's Day. Tim Duncan's mom passed and tapped him and said, how mom doing? Nah, bro. We'd have, we'd have fought. We'd have fought right there, bro. <laughs> Laugh, like, bro, that's crazy. <laughs> how mom doing? That's so we'd have fought. We would have fought right there. If I'm Tim Duncan, I'm what? <laughs> like you guys, you got you got swung on. There's no way I'm letting that slide. I don't care if we're in the middle of an NBA game in front of twenty thousand people. That is to say it. Period is disrespectful to say it on Mother's Day. Nah, bro, that's too far. It's I hope he apologized now that they retired. Because <laughs> like, KG now be uh, he's still wild, but like you know, what I'm saying he be giving props to the young dudes, or whatever. Right. Like he be, you know, what I'm saying doing his thing. You know, we, the, them young bulls, you know what they do to him. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't say that. We if you get if you get that reference, that's elite. If you get right. that reference, that's elite. But <laughs> we, can't, we can't try to keep it PG. You yeah, know, no, but, that, <laughs> but, them young bulls, they do something to KG. Yeah. Man. <laughs> That's right, funny, bro. But I'm not gonna lie, but I, it's crazy because I'm not even a KG guy because you know that's Boston. That yeah. was Kobe going against Kobe. You know what I'm saying? I was that was the enemy. That nah, he was he was the enemy. I'm like, that's why I, I don't hate Boston now. I don't really care about rivalries, but back then, Paul Pierce, KG, Rondo won my heart, man. 2020 Rondo. I Rondo's beloved by me now, but I, back then also hated Rondo. Absolutely hated Rondo. I was like, Ron, came to I score. Never, he just passed it. I used Rondo. to be a hater, but he just fake pass layup. That's I, I hated Rondo, but when I was playing ball, that's I use that all the time. I always use that, but I still hate Rondo. Anytime I'm hooping, even if it's like literally just me going to the court to shoot around by myself, I pull that out at least once or twice. Got, Got to. to. God. Still, I'll still be it's trying to shake and break and, and be hitting it off my foot. But like those, those are the two <laughs> that I, I gotta gotta get down in my bag. One day. <laughs> um, all right, that was all the start bench cuts. So now we're gonna get to the main game, last game of the episode, which is March Madness themed. We are going to be doing a draft of NBA players who won a national championship in college, starting five. It can be all time, as far back. I don't care if they won in the 50s, as long as they won a national championship in college and played in the NBA, they are eligible 
to be drafted. I'm going to give you the first pick. Hold on. Do you have a list? I don't have a list. I do have a list. Um, Do we still got that Google Doc that share? Let me see real quick. We should. If not, I'm going to just share this one with you right quick. It's in here. But I just want to make sure we got the same list. But I just sent it to you. Um, but yeah, you got a first pick. I think this is as accurate as of last year. I don't think there's any rookies you would be taking. You sent it to my phone? Actually, uh, I sent it to your email. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Um, copy, copy. <clears throat> actually, I don't did, – who – did anybody from that UConn team even, like – this is how out of touch I am with college basketball. If you're not, like, a prime time – Prospect for me to start scouting around draft time. Hold on, I can't even see. It. I, don't, I don't see it. Technical difficulties. In the meantime, use code Z Geek. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. It should be there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we up. Yeah. So. All right. Bad, 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 bad. Okay, okay, okay. You said I got the first pick? Yes. Oh, are they, hold up. Is this people that won in the NCAA? Oh, this is people that won in NCA and NBA. Oh, I wasn't trying to go that deep. <laughs> Players who won NCAA and double A championships. Both with superstars won the championship. Well, my mom to just have to go off memory at this point. I'm in career, but I don't want to change shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I know who my first pick is. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, you got you got the first one, so you can take it. Okay, I think I found a good list. Top twenty. Okay, okay. Hold on, we in business. Oh, you on the Bleach Report one? I just found that one too. Yeah. Okay, we in business. We in business. We in business. All right. Wait, what? He did. He did win it. Okay. Yeah. Well, first pick, <laughs> Mikael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. We doing we you want to do snake or you want to do just back and forth? Nah, do snake. Do snake. Snakes are okay. better because I don't I don't think if we don't do snake sometimes it don't be fair. Whoever get the okay. first pick. So I'm gonna take the captain, Kareem. And uh I might I might do a little cop out and I, I'm gonna take his teammate, Magic, <laughs> the little hee hee. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. So with them two off the board, we gonna go. Do we do that? Mm, so we can go. Okay, I, I I think one of my picks here. Actually, I think I could wait. I'm. You know, what? I'm gonna go Isaiah Thomas. I'm gonna go it. And then this I did is, not this... know he had a NCAA championship. Yeah, you low-key snuck on this list. I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna go and we're gonna go IT and then we honestly we gonna go mellow. Hear me out here. Hear mellow, me out here. yeah. Nah, we, mellow is a valid pick. I'm gonna say, hear me out here. We're gonna we gonna construct this team correctly here. Okay, I got I got magic. I got my got my center of Kareem at the four. Hmm. Let me think here. Let me think here. Um, I'm, I'm about to go a different route. Let me look at, is there a way? Yeah, most outstanding player. We, we just gauge. I respect that. I respect it. Been in the tournament, if any name pops up here. Buddy, that was going crazy. Um. Oh, my God. Gosh, shout out Cardiac Kemba, bro. I'll never, ever, ever forget that run. Um, mm -hmm. I got Magic. I got Kareem. 
Give me uh give me Anthony Davis. He did well. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was it, gonna pick Anthony Davis. I should have picked honestly, I forgot he was on his I should have picked him over Melo. Melo was a dog at Syracuse, though. He, he might literally be the best one and done player ever. Yeah, he might be. Um, sorry, give me A D at the four. Kareem and A D is crazy. Um, and then give me I need some scoring punch. I need a scoring punch. Um who else is a big time scorer? That won an NCAA championship. Hmm. This is tough to like. I'm. I'm feel like I don't want to. I have people in mind, but it's like there's got to be somebody better. I'm just forgetting. Mm -mm. I think I know I'm about to just have this. to pick somebody off the strength that I don't want to leave all this dead air, but I'm about to be sad. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You got to construct your team to the best of your abilities. Um, We doing starting five in a, in a six man? Yeah, we, we, could, we could throw in a six man. We could throw in a six man. But. Um, see, look, I wouldn't even. Good. I'm glad I looked a little bit longer. Give me. Big game, James Worthy. I was going to pick him, man. I was going to pick him. Okay. All right, so you got AD, James Worthy. My team is looking getting cracked right now. But we got <laughs> Melo, we got IT, we got MJ. I really wish I picked. I missed out on AD. I forgot about him, bro. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. That, hurts. that kind of changes up my strategy a little bit. It definitely does. So, what I'm gonna do with one of my first picks, we might we might go crazy small ball. Okay. Matter of fact, bro was six nine. So yeah, we're going crazy, crazy small ball. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Bill Russell. I'm not a huge okay. bit I'm not a huge Bill guy, but it's like eleven rings, you know what I'm saying? What what can right, I do? Right, right. And then again, like I said, we might go crazy small ball here. Let me just make sure I'm not – I'm going to make sure I'm just not bugging real quick. Nobody who I really left off here. Nah, nah, nah. We're going to go Grant Hill. Oh, I was looking at Grant Hill, bro. We're going to go Grant Hill here I because – Grant Hill. He was honestly going to be – my pick was going to be – it was going to be – I didn't know if he was going to take choose James Worthy. It was going to be Bill Russell, James Worthy, and then Grant Hill off the bench. But it's all good. We got what I'm saying. We're going to be small a little okay. bit. So I, I need – a wing, and then I'm getting my six man. I'm letting you. All right, I'm I'm gonna pick my six man first because I had this guy in mind from the jump. Okay. Give me Jalen Brunson off my bench. Okay. Okay. Little recent love, little 2015, 16 Villanova Wildcat love. Okay. Brunson coming off as my six man to round out my rotation. God, I gotta give a little bit of love to the to the Yukon. Give me the masked man Rip Hamilton. Spot okay. up. Give me the spacing that I need to let Magic and A D and Kareem work. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. I only got one more pick left. And honestly, it's between two people. Do I want to choose get the size off the bench? Bro was you know what I'm saying? Bro was nice. Well, had a nice little stretch. Or do I just be a home like you know what I'm saying? Do I just be a homer and mm, pick, I could just pick Kemba and just be just off just for vibes purposes. Right. Just for vibes, I could pick Kemba. I'm, I'm gonna pick Bill Walton. Bill Cause we, Walton. Cause we, you know what I'm saying? Bill Walton had a nice little stretch too. And we need some size too. My team is mad small. So he's gonna be my senior yeah. out of the bench. When uh, he definitely, he definitely, there. definitely high up there, 100% high up there. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, 
We just need that, that went over that went over your head. It definitely did. It definitely. I was just like, yep, yeah, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about. But bro is definitely into the, the psychedelics. Is he really? Have you not seen that? Nah. Bill Walton has done unreasonable amounts of like acid and shrooms and just like throughout his life while he played, after he played. I'm sure he probably still do to this day. I, well, like I definitely need him on my team. I definitely need my sixth man to be, you know what I'm saying? Somebody a little outside the box a little. Right. <laughs> you need to be cut from a different floor. Facts. All right. So like, what's your what's your starting five and your six man? So my team, I got IT at the one. I got Melo at the two. No, sorry. All right. I got IT at the one. I got MJ at the two. I got Melo at the three. I got Grant Hill at the four. I got Bill Russell at the five. And I got Bill Walton coming off the the bench. bench. Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. That is tough. So my team, I've got Magic at the one. I've got Richard Hamilton at the two. I got James Worthy at the three. AD at the four, Kareem at the five, and then my sixth man is Jalen Brunson. Y'all let us know in the comments who you think got the got the better team, who will win. If this was a winner go home, March Madness, you only got one game. Which lineup are you rocking with? Let us know in the comments. That's a tough. I ain't gonna lie. AD and Kareem is yeah, we are with magic that. running. The, that's a little bit tough. I'm not gonna lie. That's a little bit tough. But you know what I'm saying? We got, you know what I'm saying. We got the second greatest player ever at MJ, so we, we good over here. <laughs> and look, you know I agree. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm saying we good over here. MJ, I ain't gonna lie, my team is gonna lose off the stra- strength of MJ and IT is fighting in timeouts. Yeah, they they, they <laughs> beef it all game. Bro. They beef it all game. I literally got half of the Showtime Lakers on my roster. Oh, yeah. bro. <laughs> OD, we don't got no chemistry on my team. My team is straight, and then Melo over there crying for the ball. Yeah, my team is cooked. My, I got my lead, fearless leader in Bill Russell. Hopefully, he's just gonna hold it down. He got to bro. Eleven rings, he's seasoned, bro. Fact. Seasoned. That's a real vet right there. Any March Madness predictions, brackets out of you? Did you make a bracket this year? I know zero about college basketball. I made one. I've watched maybe two or three men's college basketball games all year, like actual games. I've watched like I've been keeping up on like some prospects here and there, but have not really sat. I it just there's not enough time in the day, really. Like Thank if God. basketball is on, NBA is always gonna take precedent. So it's like <laughs> if there's no NBA games I'm really interested to watch, which is that really doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like if that's the case, maybe I'll throw on a college game, but like it just it's not enough time. If the schedules were different, maybe, but they overlap too much. Uh, I make I make time for NBA games. I right. literally just can't make time for even NBA games. Sometimes I get up, I'd be tired. Sometimes I'd be falling asleep. Even games I really want to watch, I'd be like falling asleep because bro, of that be the worst when I'm watching. I I'm watching a game and it's always the West Coast teams. It'd be like. Lakers, that's Kings, Lakers, Golden Warriors. State, and Thunder, or something like. And it's like I'm sitting here, and it's the third quarter, and I'm on my couch, like. <laughs> and then I wake up at like two in the morning. I check my phone. It's like Stephen Curry hit a buzzer beater to send the game, and I'm like, no, I missed it. I missed it. Thanks. That be the worst. That is always the worst. Uh, but yeah, like I can't. They need to. I know the West Coast is three hours behind, but, like, start the games at, like, 3 o'clock or something, bro. It's a little bit ridiculous. We can't do this, bro. I can't. I, Bro, I physically cannot do this. Games and I mean, keep going fan. on at 1 in the morning. First of all, right now, and I know some people that listen are international. If y'all – how do y'all do it? Y'all be up at, like, 3 a.m. when the game starts. Do y'all really watch it live? Bro, I would watch all the games back, bro. I would just watch it back. I can't. I I literally can't do it, bro. It's no is not, way. It wouldn't. It literally wouldn't happen for me. I wouldn't be an NBA fan because I can't do that. No, I would watch any other sport. It's just, you know, I could not. It does not fit in with my schedule. <clears throat> no, like no. how? Do, y'all's work day is still the same. Like y'all work during the day. Do y'all really? When do y'all sleep? I don't know. International fans have a different level of dedication. If you're really like 
setting alarms for like 2.30. And it'd be crazy because a lot of them be fans of obscure teams. It'd be like international. Weird foreign. teams. Inter- I'm a fan from Hornets fan from Germany. I'm waking, <laughs> up at, I'm waking up at four in the morning to watch a team with no LaMelo ball. I'm out here watching freaking Brandon Miller and the Funky Bunch <laughs> get smoked <laughs> by 30. Like, yeah, Insane. it's crazy. Better I, than I me, I would not be watching basketball. Definitely not. Definitely not. But with that, that is going to do it for episode 51 of the Off the Glass podcast. As always, if you made it through the whole episode, we appreciate you. Um, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell. We're going to be ramping up the content big time with the playoffs around the corner. And then in the playoffs, we're giving you those, those recaps that you are in dire need of. We're giving you the playbooks. We've watched the film. We got the time. Come here for the NBA content. We've seen man. the future. We already know who's going to win. All right. I could have told you that at the beginning of the year. <laughs> you got to stay tuned if you want to find out. <laughs> uh, follow us on the socials that you see there at the bottom, at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram, at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. As always, I'm Billy, and that's Damon. We out. Peace. Yes, sir.